Lovely. Are we, are we all set? Are we all good to... Uh... We're all to go. Let's do it. Oh, look at the enthusiasm <laughs> there. All smiling and ready to go on three and two and one. Welcome everyone to another episode. Yes, that's another episode. We've not been kicked off yet of the ACCA Global Podcast, where I am delighted to welcome my guest today. It's been a long day at work, but this is the cherry on the cake. I have, and he's laughing already, but this is serious stuff today. We have, we have a multiple business owner who runs his own practice, an FCCA, also a freelance lecturer, and has previously worked, previously worked at a brewery, should I say. I must give a, a massive welcome onto the podcast, Mahmood Reza. Welcome, Mahmood. Why, thank you, James. Good evening to you, and thank you very much for inviting me at the end of a long evening. Hopefully, we don't live to regret this, but thank, I'm really looking forward to this. Oh, mega stuff, I must say, but thank you so much for your time. I've, oh, it's been a lovely day of lectures, and also speaking to a fellow lecturer now as well. But uh, so for the guests, uh, let, let, you know, let, let the viewers know, where are, you, where are you calling in from today, and which country are you representing? I'm representing the country of England. I am living in a place in England called Leicester. So for those of you, depending where you're listening to around the world, Leicester is infamous or famous for winning the Premiership in recent history, punching above its weight, some people would say. Uh, it's also notorious for the city of lockdown. And according to a recent diary survey, it's the nosiest people in the UK as well. I'm originally from London, but Leicester is my adopted city. Fantastic. And uh, as the viewers may or may or not already know, I am also from Leicester. So, so my mood's already in, uh, in, my, in my good books as well. But uh, <laughs> where, where, whereabouts is your family from as well? Uh, where's your background? Well, my background is I'm uh, one of nine kids. Uh, well, they're probably a bit older now to be called kids, but I'm one of nine uh, kids. So I've got six brothers, two sisters. Uh, my mum's from Iran. Uh, most of us, vast majority, were born in London and they're scattered now, my brothers and sisters, all over the world in terms of Hong Kong, in Africa, uh, in terms of Liverpool. I know that's not really overseas, but <laughs> for some people it might be. <laughs> well, 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 it, that, that's a whole different kettle of fish. But I must say, my phone's been ringing today. Jamie Vardy's been on the phone, Brendan okay. Rogers, Harvey Barnes. James, please, 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 can I come on your podcast today? I said, no, 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 no. I can't <laughs> let my mood down. This is very important. We've got to talk about how you're going to run your own practice. But uh, so the viewers know as well, how do, you, how do you and I know each other? That's a great question, James. I think we connected um, uh, more recently uh, in the virtual world on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe, I, in fact, I know this. I watched a fantastic interview you did with Trisha. Uh, I know Trisha, so that connection here, we spoke to each other via LinkedIn, and I think that's uh, how we're actually speaking together today. Absolutely spot on, and I must say, absolute gents as well, but, th but this is the reason for the podcast itself, that viewers can connect with us. All of our details, Mamu's business is all in the description below. If you have any common interests, any questions, feel free to connect on there as well. But the, the other key rule of the podcast is the lovely guest, and should we say the first standing up podcast today, where we are both stood up, we're very professional. Um, what drink have we gone for today? We have gone, because I'm still at my office, uh, and obviously uh, people out there, make sure you do not mix drinking and driving. We've gone for a very luxurious hot chocolate. Spot on, in terms of it. I, the, the sugar, I can, I can feel it going through me now. I don't, oh, spilling his drink, he's that excited to get going <laughs> as well. But uh, the, the final thing is, before we get rocking and rolling, is how many years have you been a qualified ACCA member? I have been a qualified ACCA member for takeaway three, 28 years now, James. Oh, good grief. Well, I, I don't want to do a comparison in terms of how old I am to how many years you've been a member, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different issue again. But uh, just, just for the viewers, before we, get, we, before we get into the main bits of the podcast, just give us a short and sweet overview as to what you're all about, Mr. Reza. Well, let's have a think. So I... Um, Started my life in London. Um, I, just to point out to everyone, by the way, so in terms of where I am now, uh, I've had a few bumps along the way. So I didn't really pay much attention at school, which is a bit naughty. So I didn't really do particularly well in the exams, redid my year, went, left London to come to Leicester to do my first degree. Did that, qualified, I majored in law, minored in accounting and maths, 
then left that thinking, what am I going to do next with my life? Didn't have a clue. So I took a year out, did some part-time teaching, moved into education. I was a teacher, lecturer for about three years. Thought, great, teaching is a great profession. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in the UK, if people know that you're a lecturer or a teacher, they think you can't do anything practical. So I thought, okay, let's jump ship. So I jumped ship with nothing to go to. Found a job in industry, went into industry. I worked for a brewery company, a very famous one in Leicester, which I might mention later on. Yeah. Did that for five and a half years, qualified, got some experience, thought, right, what am I going to do next? I love the world of accountancy, I should say, but I thought I don't want to say just as an accountant. So I jumped ship after five and a half years with nothing to go to. And I realized what I'd always dreamed of as a kid was to start my own business. And mm -hmm. 25 years ago, gone February, 26 coming up. Um, I managed to avoid staying in my back bedroom and I've managed to grow my business since then. Absolutely, absolutely spot on. And, and that road there is just full of ups and downs and, and many highs and I'm sure many lows, which, which we are going to come on to later on in the, in the insights. But, but the main sort of focus for today is we're going to have ACCA members, people who are in the accountancy field who have always thought, and I've worked with people in that area where they go, I really want to start up an accountancy firm myself, go into practice, what are the things I've got to be picking up on? And I mean, what kind of uh, guests we have today, you're going to have so many insights on that as well. But before we come on to that, we, we're going to come on to our quick fire round where you have no idea on these questions. You, you've Absolutely. watched an episode or two. And yeah. this is the fun bit for me where if people message you on LinkedIn, you know, th this is a case of a nice, easy one where you've got two answers in terms of it that you can give me. That, that's all you're having. There's no whim about it. But, uh, well, we've got to talk about this one. First of all, are you a morning person or an evening person? I'm actually both, actually. I like very early morning because mm -hmm. there's not, nobody around. I, I do what I call eat the frog first thing in the morning. So that's sort of really arduous thing that you always put off or get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I'm an evening person in town around about after nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, then, you know, it's a great thing. Uh, mm. So for me, it's actually the two extremes, which is not good for sleep patterns. So mm. for me, both, both of them. I, I agree with you on frog theory in terms of it. I eat your frog every day. That's that one task that you just go, oh my word, do I have to? Well, yes, you do. If you have to eat a frog, just so the viewers know, if you had to eat a frog for every day of your life, when would you eat it on that day? First thing in the morning, get it out of the way, and you look back on your day and you go, positive day. Very good in terms of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely spot on. Well, uh, linking into a bit of what's been going on in 2020 with mm -hmm. COVID as well, but would you consider yourself an indoorsy person or an outdoorsy person? Mm, that's a great question. Mm. I would say that... I gravitate towards more outside. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of sporting prowess, unfortunately, that those days are way behind me now. But I do <laughs> like the outdoors because I do like that getting that feeling of fresh air, open space. Mm. Um, so, in terms of activities, probably not a great deal these days. But you know, I prefer the outdoors to the indoors. Well, well, we, we are both from the Leicester region where. Loughborough University is famous for having Olympic teams. I believe the Chinese team were there uh, for the London Olympics, but I'm pretty sure I've seen you doing a fair few 400 meter laps at, at lightning bolt speed. I, I thought it was you, you know, black hoodie. I thought that was going to be our secret there, James, but obviously the cat's <laughs> out the bag now. It's all good. It's all right. I'm more of an outdoorsy person. I've got to go running. Literally, that, that's my, my go-to time. And I don't go with headphones on. I don't know about okay. you, but you just go into your own little world, think about things, and uh, it's amazing the different ideas. It's, uh, it's actual your, your consciousness in terms of it. You're just going, oh, and before you know it, 10 miles has gone by. But uh, um, from an accountant's perspective as well, would you say you're a low-tech person or a high-tech person? Th this will be interesting for people out there thinking about doing or setting up their own accounting practice. Okay, if you, if you want to put it in the context of just in terms of flow through accounting practice, I would say to do the heavy lifting, things like processes, procedures, transaction processing, all the essential stuff that you've got to feed into something, the technology 100%, because mm -hmm. uh, it cuts down dead time, it makes things much more efficient. Yep. But here's the thing, if you cannot run a practice purely on technology, mm -hmm. you need the human dimension that comes into it and blend, blend it as well. So I think... The interaction, the explanations, the talking to clients, absolutely you've got to develop those social skills, the actual heavy lifting behind the scenes, producing the accounts, producing the, uh, the record keeping, technology 100%. Nice. And, and from a personal perspective, you know, at home, 
chilling, just like after this podcast, high tech or low tech? Well, actually, I'm more low tech. So, for example, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I'm not very good. My wife probably gives me that rolled eye expression. Um, I'm trying to wean myself off the iPads and all the rest of it after a certain mm -hmm. time. Yep. In terms of reading, which I'm an avid reader, I love actual books. I prefer books to Kindles or reading things online. Uh, and so I would say probably more low tech in that respect. But obviously, mm -hmm. the thing that I've really got to sort of slap my wrist on is actually too much on the phone and too much on the computer. Oh, I completely agree with you there. And um, for, if, uh, if Mrs. Reza is, is watching this right now, it's okay. Don't worry. I'm looking after him. He's being well behaved. <laughs> it's all good. It's all right. But uh, I, I quite like, and I've got into audiobooks in 2020 where we get a bit cooped up working from home. Hop on an audiobook, 20 minutes, little walk around the block, fresh air, and, and then that's another surge. But uh, you pick, I picked up on a really good point you mentioned there as to switching off your phone at a certain time in the evening. And I completely advocate for that. I, it's so true. But what, what time do you usually go for? Well, let's talk about in my head in the theory, and I'll, tell you, I'll be honest with you and tell you what actually happened. So I recognize I've still got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, I'm aiming to try and turn the phone off at least two hours at least before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. The reality is probably by the time I crash, which is probably around about 11 o'clock midnight, mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably checking the phone about half an hour before I go to sleep, mm. which is not very good because of various things that go on in your brain mm. and not being able to turn off. Uh, once, I mean, you, we're qualified accountants here, but once you actually start to understand and take an interest in other fields and other areas, reading about dopamine and the impact on your mind mm. and what you're thinking and and uh, lots of people say well i've been reading about what you actually put into your mind so lots of people are conscious what they what they eat and how they exercise but what you actually put into your mind especially before you go to bed makes a massive difference as well about what you're thinking how you wake up the next day as well so massive things in terms of it but uh, I'm, i agree. I, I think it's, it's that, it's that it's trying to empty your head sometimes though james i don't know if you find that mm. but when you are getting to that point you want to drift off to sleep you need to actually disconnect from technology you need to disconnect from a, an mm. artificial world mm. and just let your brain do what it does best well, well maybe that could be my title for for this podcast <laughs> as to want to drift off to bed <laughs> <laughs> video that's gone viral online <laughs> but we did talk a bit about exercise there but would you classify yourself because accountants have a bit of judgment made on them but are you a suit kind of guy or a sort of sportswear what, what would you say is your your go-to well actually in, in a work environment if we're talking work i'll talk about work and pleasure in a work environment uh, then I actually tend to be more casual. So I have no dress code for my staff. I say, obviously, I draw the line at mankinis. But, you know, if, if you're not client-facing, you can come however you feel comfortable. So we don't have a suit policy. If I'm not seeing clients for the first time, then I tend to wear, you know, T-shirts, jeans, and all the rest of it. If I'm meeting clients for the first time, depending who they are, then it will be a shirt, uh, trousers, and that's it. But generally speaking, as you can guess by my attire, this is what I'm wearing today, when it comes outside of work, by the way, there's one thing I've found many, many years ago. Men, generally speaking, are rubbish at choosing clothes. So luckily, I have a wife who's, who's got a great eye. Um, so she tends to buy me some decent uh, clobber to wear outside of work. Well, well, an insight for the global podcast as to everyone who watches my videos knows I'm, I'm not particularly... Um, fashionable and uh, unfortunately i haven't got a girlfriend or a wife to help me um in terms of it but hey ho you know maybe 2021 who we'll see what happens but uh, um sorry uh, if angelina's watching it's okay i'm available monday to sunday um for a day to any time so it's okay but don't dawdle too much angelina <laughs> I know. I'll put, put it this I'll pay for your flight, economy, hand luggage. Yeah, It'll yeah, be okay. Exactly. Let's draw the line somewhere. <laughs> well, well, that actually nicely touches on a bit of spending habits on there. But would you say, because I get this a few times from my students as well, are you a spender or a saver? Uh, again, it's probably a very boring answer. I'm a bit of both here. So mm -hmm. um, I'm very much for at some point in the future, make sure you've got money away as a safety cushion. Mm -hmm. uh, so in my early days when I started my business, I had a tremendous amount of debt that I took on to get the business going. Mm -hmm. uh, I then consciously wanted to move away from having no debt at all. So I, I saw it as personal freedom. Uh, but I actually like to spend money. So I'm not really a materialist. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at my car, 
Uh, you can probably see it's probably held together by sticky tape or something equivalent. So I'm not a big materialist here. So I like to spend. I like people to enjoy themselves. I like the experiences more than I like materiality. Mm. But I also need to make sure that I put money aside yeah. that if I have a need to dip into it or if I start to slow things down, mm. I've got a cushion there for me. Oh, spot on. No, I completely agree. I'm, I'm a bit of both. I'll, I'll always spend things on where I see added value, but you know, clothes, anything on those lines, it's, it's a case of, I'll be all right. Be okay. In terms of these sort of things, you know, I've got one hoodie. You'll be okay. Pop it on. Be all right. But uh, that, that, that's some really nice insights in there. Plus I've got to understand a few bits as well, but uh, we, we, we can, we can now come on to the more sort of mildly more serious one as to, okay. well, in, in terms of, we want to be looking at accountancy practice now because there'll okay. be people watching this where they may be thinking one day I want to set up my own practice. What's the sort of best ways of going about it? So talk us through your experiences as to from your insights. Well, how's it been? What, what's the sort of story been from your side? Well, the story has been in, an interesting one. So what I've learned and it's taken me 25 plus years to learn this slowly is that you need, to, if you, if, if you want to, develop your own accounting practice is you mustn't be what I call product focused. So mm -hmm. if we have a mindset that says, oh, I'm an accountant, I can do tax, I can do this and all the rest of it, and it's product centric, then you're going to find it very difficult to build up a sustainable business. Mm -hmm. You need to do lots of things. You need to think about the client. And you, I would suggest, James, you need to first of all think of your practice as a business. Yeah. You're a business owner and you need to take some of the advice that you give to clients. So make sure that you do things like giving good client satisfaction, making sure that you actually understand you're competent. Most people, by the way, expect you, if you say you're an accountant, that they expect you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to say and reinforce that. It's about social skills. It's about being able to promote yourself. It's about actually having the disciplines of doing things. So I do a cash flow and I've done a cash flow only because I've got some clients who aren't always punctual in paying their bills. But I've done a cash flow 12 months ahead since day one. So the things that you encourage people to do, have the business disciplines. Okay. But you've got to find out, you've got to be realistic. And it took me on average, I would say the first two or three years, I did a combination of things. I had part-time jobs, I hustled, just to keep the practice going. And therefore, don't expect to make a great deal of money uh, mm -hmm. in that period of time. It normally typically takes three to five years just mm -hmm. to establish yourself. Uh, I think also focus on the things that clients like, like good service, and that mm -hmm. means doing things on time, responding to their queries, dialogue, doesn't have to be formal, doesn't have to be informal. Define who your client group is and make sure you look after that group very well. Spot on. I mean, mega tips in there in terms of, I think, especially in today's modern world of where can you add value and understanding that client specifically as well. So knowing how many siblings they've got or whereabouts they live, or are they local? Can you actually, well, can you have a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, in, in terms of where we are in modern times? Um, but also talk us through those early days, those, that sort of start to five years. I mean, was it a case of just working in sort of a back room, long days? Talk us through it. Yeah, fine. So I remember actually quite clearly. So the 1st of February, 1995 was my official start date. So I, uh, prior to that, I worked for a very famous brewery company. Uh, I'd left. I said, I... For me, what I'm always driven by is I had experience, even though I wasn't driven by money, mm -hmm. it was actually getting the experience. So I remember 1st of November, February 95, thinking, ah, what have I done? And then working in the back bedroom, just grabbing clients where I could. Mm -hmm. um, and I made lots of mistakes in the early stage, I will say that. You know, you underprice things, you yeah. think things are going to be turned around very quickly, things take much longer. I made a few mistakes, made a few wrong decisions. But I actually had, whether it is... Uh, um, shall we say stupidity, whether it is tenacity, whether it is just blind that I'm not going to make this fail, mm. I'm just driven by this sort of hunger thing just to make it work. So in the first year, I think I made under four figures. So mm -hmm. I didn't make a thousand pounds worth of income. I did other things. I wasn't proud. I did cleaning. I did part-time teaching. I did anything just to keep money going into the business there mm -hmm. as well. Um, as time went on, there's this thing, you've met it yourself, James, in the, in the in world, is people have got to like you, trust you, to actually before they do business with you yeah. there as well. So you've got to have, the, you've got to have patience, you've got to have that timing that comes in there. And the first two or three years, I have to say, were very tough. Um, I personal situation at the time as well, I had the business to grow, I had demands going on with family, I'm trying to do all of that together. And there's a thing that I really learned, two things I learned which have stood me in good stead. Number one, it's not what you know in life, it's who you know. 
That certainly helps. And, and number two, what your success is today doesn't count for anything tomorrow morning. Mm. You know, people want to know. They're not really that interested. I know that sounds quite brutal, mm. but what you do excellently today is today. Tomorrow mm. is a completely different chapter there as well. But, you know, I hustled. Um, I lost money. I made mistakes, but I just powered on through. And then you get to that stage five years later, and I moved out my back bedroom. So that was a great thing for me, getting outside of the home. That was a real sort of landmark for me because it was now I've got a proper business, so to speak. Uh, I'm positioned in an office. Um, I felt I got to a point of thinking, if I'm going to go to the next stage of growth, what am I going to do? And the only way I had to do that was to invest in the business, to mm. take on a member of staff, to grow that. Did make a great deal of money in that mm. next incremental leap here. And I think what happens in after a while, you seem to hit that thing. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, uh, I always think it's going to finish tomorrow. Uh, anybody who's a successful business, and I don't think I'm successful yet, mm. I am, you know, in terms of compared to other things, is you've got to literally think about what's going to happen over the next few months, plan mm. ahead and stick to your lane. Spot on. I mean, so many good points in there. I've got to come back to not holding yourself just to look, oh, I'm successful today. It's a case of my sort of mindset every day is 1% better. That's it. And cumulatively over the years, whatever it may be. And it's the days where you'll know this from your early days and, and probably this week, who knows? It's the days when you don't feel like it as well. You don't feel like posting out on social media, Instagram, mm. LinkedIn. You, you don't feel like producing those uh, uh, actual lecture notes in my case, or you don't feel like re registering those products online or, or finding the links that you need to do and you just go, and then bring yourself back as to, well, what's my passion? Why am I doing this? Little reminders and uh, putting yourself out there and just that little bit more, little bit more, little bit more. And hey, a cold beer on a Friday tastes, tastes even sweeter. I think that's a brilliant point. And for those people who listen to this uh, podcast, those who are studying, there's an amazing amount of stuff that you're learning, by the way, that actually has got a practical relevance. So what you described there, James, is a great example of case and costing. So anyone who's done performance management knows case and costing is about small incremental improvements. Mm. It's about also thinking here. And what I find normally for most business people is that what goes on between your ears plays a real valuable part. And a lot of us can look at other people and think, oh my gosh, they're doing really well, they're really successful. Look at me, I've got what I call imposter syndrome. I don't think I'm doing as well as I. But don't be sucked in by what other people are doing. Don't mm. get you know, thinking, you know, I'm not doing as well. So you've got to have a really strong heart. You've got to have a lot of passion and belief in what you're doing. Obviously, you've got to be competent as well. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure you keep your learning up to date, your CBD. And I think with all those things in mind and a plan and about doing all the business disciplines you are, if you can mold that and round that, then you're, you know, you're really going to make a great impact on life. Yeah, I, I, absolutely spot on. And, and it really resonates with a, with a quote I saw from Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, the other day, where okay. you, you're talking about different, he, he sees it as different chapters. So he says, loads of people come to me and they say, oh, you know, I want to be like you. Oh gosh, you know, aren't you so successful? And he says, yeah, well, I'm on, I'm on chapter 30 or chapter 31. I've been, I've been going at this for years and years and years. It's the long hours, the early starts, the late finishes, the weekend work. You're just starting your chapter one. So compare your, your book to you and then just compare. I compare only myself to myself. That, that's the person who I want to be. I'm not interested in anyone else. I wake up in the morning, look myself in the mirror, time to go again. And that's, what, that's think, how he thinks. Oh, that's a great way of putting it, James. I think it's weird. I mean, it's, it's lots of variations on that same theme. Uh, lots of people who've got to a position in their life where they, other people think you're successful, you manage to get to that thing. Overnight mm. successes don't happen. They tend mm. to be several years in the making, several years of blood, sweat and toil, uh, years of making mistakes, years of successes as well. There are successes along that route here. Mm. And I th think in terms of the expectation, I f sometimes find amongst students of ACCA that I've met, mentored and helped, mm -hmm. and supported, there's sometimes an expectation that things can happen quite quickly mm. and it doesn't, you know, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes application. Those basic things of application really, really is what you've got to bear in mind. And you're quite right. You've got to think about where you are now, not necessarily where that person is that you're mm. comparing to. Oh, absolutely spot on. Again, it's, it's 
surrounding yourself with people who just sort of think differently, have different ideas, where I'm, I'm big into my running in terms of it. And it's a case of, I always refer to quite a lot of life as it's a marathon, not a sprint. So lots of people just think it's an overnight success or it's just going to happen in an hour. It doesn't work like that at all, as you know. But uh, I mean, coming on to the business now, how, how are you looking to maybe grow it in the future? Or where, where are you sort of at at the moment uh, in your eyes for, for the viewers? Well, in terms of where I'm now, so we'll come up to year 26 next on the 1st of February next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of, I've just added another member to my team. And for me, it's about doing two or three things. We've, been, we've had a, a, a virtual journey over the last few years where we're actually becoming more, shall we say, aspirational towards a digital paperless office. Mm -hmm. uh, there will still be clients, by the way, that literally bring in carrier bags or do spreadsheets. That's fine. And for us, we cater for all types of clients. We've got clients who are multi-million pound business turnover to those freelancers who generate maybe, you know, five, six thousand pounds a year. Mm -hmm. We've got something that we can offer all of them. So it's about productivity. It's about efficiency of systems, about efficiency of processes. It's about also having focused niches. So if you want to be a generalist, that's great. But what happens is you don't have anything distinctive to, com to compete on, mm. no USPs. So for me, we're just going to our next chapter of growth. We've just invested in a full -time, couple of full-time individual members, some in the marketing, some in the, uh, actual, the actual doing the work thing. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just constantly improving, allocating more responsibility to my team uh, so they can make more decisions by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, it's probably then looking at a couple of new product developments over the next 12 months. Mega stuff. I mean, but, but now we're talking operationally, what's going on the ground, sort of week to week, month to month, and also thinking strategically as well, growth mindset as to, well, where do, where do we see things going? And that, that's really prosperous as to taking on new staff and they'll have new ideas as well. Are they from an accounting background or why did, why did you hire them as well? That's good, Pete. Now, we, the, the, so for the last person that we took on, um, I mean, skills, don't get me wrong, skills are great. Education is great, but actually what I look for uh, is actually more somebody's mindset and attitude there as mm. well. Skills you can always develop, mm -hmm. knowledge about you know, how to do things like bookkeeping and all that stuff and how do you software applications. It's needed, but it's actually not the main ingredient that we look for. So mm. what I'm looking for, and it's very difficult to identify that in an interview stage, yeah. but it's actually somebody's interaction. Do they gel with the rest of the team? So they could be technically brilliant, but if their character doesn't quite fit with everybody else, mm. they're not really going to be a good addition. Mm. Uh, do, they, do I think they've got the right stuff? And again, it's very difficult to know. So, you know, do I think they've actually got a work attitude? Do I, do I, can they be relaxed? I don't ex expect to listen to their, to agree with their sense of humor, but I also really wear people and it's, you know, can they work in a pressured environment? Mm. Because what I said to all my team, there's two most important things in our business. Number one, the customer. Yeah. And number two is me uh, in the sense of because I'm focused on customer outcomes, mm. they need to make sure what they do. Can they stand by that and say, I've done my best. And I, we don't mind about mistakes being made, by the way. So if people make mistakes all the time, as long mm. as you own it and try and put it right. And that's that's what we look for. Uh, I, I, well, if you have that customer focus, which is clearly the sort of ethos, the values that get through to uh, your employees and you, you really advocate. I always just say, it's a case of imagine you're in your customer's shoes, or I think from lecturing, imagine I'm in the student's shoes. Are they really going to understand that? In the same way from a practice sort of way, is wording this email going to a client going to help them? Are they going to understand what it means, what it's got to do, and then how can we help them on top of it? Sort of little triggers, as I like to call it. And it's a case of just every little step, uh, I can't remember who the, the, uh, the cyclist is, uh, the trainer for Team GB, but he goes through the process from start to finish and goes, well, how can we be 1% better there and 1% better there and 1% better there? And before you know it, all these little incremental bits add up to a really, really happy client. And then that leads to referrals, as uh, I'm sure you're well aware of. I mean, how, how many referrals have you got this year? You got, had, a, had a few come in? Well, on average, uh, for the last few weeks, uh, we probably have, on average, new clients, probably about three or four. So referrals, you know, we convert quite a lot of them. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we get every single person who comes to us. Sometimes the fit isn't there. You know, either the client doesn't actually like the way we work, mm -hmm. we may not like something about the client. Uh, generally speaking, it works well. And I think that's an interesting point you raised there, James, is because 
for anybody setting up their business, again, you know, in the early days, you take anything because it's there, you grab mm. it, that's fine. Okay, it doesn't mean it's the most profitable for your business, doesn't mean it's a good fit for your business, you promise too much, you under deliver, those are all big problems there. You need to think about eventually about what's my focus, what are, what's the, is there a particular niche, particular thing I'm looking at. I met loads of brilliant bookkeepers who run very successful bookkeeping businesses. Mm -hmm. And I've met lots of people who say, I'm just going to focus on tax. So what yeah. is it? That you're going to you know, develop your offer in so in terms of that it still comes forward again i still have that unnatural thought process that actually we can't guarantee on that business for the mm. next few months so we're going to don't oversaturate the staff and don't put too many burdens mm. but you can feed the machine mm. oh no that, that's expectation in terms of it and i think if you're setting your stall out like that then the, the the actual customer out there or potential client who knows goes Ah, I see. I see my mood. This is how we work. This is the team. That's their ethos. Is it for me? That's it in terms of it. No, absolutely spot on. There's so many good points in there where you and I could be chatting away for, for ages in terms of it. But the viewers now, I've got to know more about you. So this is a case of if they drop you a message on LinkedIn with any of these little facts that they've watched this, that's absolutely mega where we've had other people that have had photos sent to them about their dinner and everything. So <laughs> who knows? But so the viewers know, Mahmood has no idea on these questions as well, which makes Absolutely it even not. funnier. But the first one, I always give away because I'm, I'm interested in music. I'm a music guy. So if you could listen to one band or who's your favorite band that is your complete go-to? It's a band I've probably seen uh, the most number of times. And I'm uh, Bruce Springsteen. I like the earlier stuff. Mm. So I'm a big Springsteen fan. I've seen him in concert probably about four or five times. Uh, so that's my particular favorite one. In terms of more recent times, I'm a big fan of Macy Gray. Because oh. uh, I uh, DJ on a radio station once a week as well. Cool. So I get to listen to quite a lot of R&B uh, fun. The only genre of music I don't like is jazz. So any jazz listeners out there, my apologies for that. So probably Macy Gray, um, Tracy Chapman, I'm a mm -hmm. big fan of. But in terms of performing band, it's mm. probably Springsteen. Are you a fan of Janis Joplin by any chance? I am actually, yeah. Oh, she's got some serious lungs on her. Oh, yeah. I mean, mega, mega in terms of, I'm, I'm a big rock and roll fan. So uh, I've had a bit of Queen on today as well. Just, I, I think it just gets overplayed, but from 2020, not going out to bars and pubs or whatever, I've not heard much of Queen. I'm like, I've got to bring it back. <laughs> Did you see the film, James? I have, yes. Well, yeah, well, the, the, well, the interesting question for you then is, I know coming back to it, but yeah. have you also seen the Elton John film? I have, and I have to say that Ooh. Bohemian Rhapsody, I think, basically knocked spots off it. Mm. The Elton John film, there was probably about two or three bits in there that was good. I, Elton, if you're listening, I do apologise, uh, but I thought the Elton John film was okay, Rocket Man, mm. but I think it doesn't bear any comparison to Bohemian. I, 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 and apologies, Reginald. I agree. I, I did like I did like the Queen one a bit better. I, I had to go. I did a t uh, ACCA talk with uh, the University of Lincoln out in out in India, and then on the way there, I watched Elton John, and on the way back, I watched Queen. And pff, yes, head and shoulders, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I know important stuff, but you'll get people messing you. I go. I agree with you. That will be it. But uh, what, what, any old John fans, I do apologise. Please don't, <laughs> don't don't get upset. You, you have to put that as your tagline in uh, in your business now that you're a rocket man or something. But uh, away from my bad jokes. But uh, we're, we are both ACCA qualified members. But if you weren't a qualified accountant running your own practice, hmm. what would you have been? Do you think? I think one of two things. I would probably say I'd either have been a journalist. Nice. Uh, or um, I would have liked to have gone into the world of entertainment as an actor. I'm probably rubbish at it, uh, but I think my last thing was probably when I was at teacher training college playing in a pantomime as a mm. Dane. Um, but yeah, so I think probably, <laughs> am I allowed three careers or is it only two? You can have as many as you like, it's all right. I would have said journalism would have probably been number one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think acting, the acting profession, and probably also a chef. Chef. Oh, interesting. Good. What, what, what's your go-to sort of uh, food and meal where if, uh, if Mrs. Rez is watching, she'll be, you know, eagle-eyed on this. What, what would you go for? Well, I, I've been, my wife, we've been vegetarians about 15, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So in terms of start, I like Caribbean food. 
My wife's uh, family's from the Caribbean originally. Mm -hmm. So Caribbean food is particularly, uh, her cooking's excellent. So I'm very fortunate in that respect. Um, I like spicy food predominantly. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, but you know, in terms of background, James, in terms of, um, you know, if I was to go out to eat, then I'd probably go out for something like Indian. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd go out, for, there aren't that many good Caribbean places in Leicester. Mm -hmm. So my wife actually t uh, knocks the spots off that. Um, and I would say probably at home, actually, I prefer simple food. So mm -hmm. because of my background, predominantly things like, um, I don't know, what, what would I say? Yeah, so chickpea curry, mm -hmm. uh, things such as uh, vegetable lasagna. Nice. Oh, proper stuff. I mean, but, but being from Leicester, we are spoiled with, with lovely curry, I must say. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there are some absolutely mega restaurants, and, uh, and as ever, the, uh, the ACCA Global Podcast has zero sponsorship, and we are <laughs> well and truly open to be sponsored by any Lincoln, takeaway, uh, Lincoln or Leicester takeaways in terms of it, where maybe I could send you a goodie bag in terms of saying, thank you for coming on. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think bribery from the, the, you're quite right. I think Leicester, um, it, had, it has the biggest Diwali uh, festival outside of India. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, this year it was cancelled. It had a virtual ceremony instead. Mm. But I think it's also, um, you know, London and Bradford and Manchester might object to this, but I still think it's probably the curry capital of the UK. Oh, but I've well, if people would like to object or would like to put their opinions, um, Send samples. <laughs> well, they can put it in the comments. You and I will answer any questions from today <laughs> as well, whether that be about accountancy practices, ACCA or curry. So <laughs> we're, we're all covered on that now. So it's all right. But uh, on, to, on to more sort of other bits in terms of we've talked about the accountancy practice. You're obviously a busy kind of guy as well. But away from work, how do you sort of uh, downtime? What's your sort of go to away from work? What do you enjoy? Well, I, I suppose more recently, because we've had obviously coronavirus has affected what people can and cannot do. If I talk about pre COVID or when COVID becomes a thing of a distant memory, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully sooner rather than later, then going to the pictures, mm -hmm. uh, theatre, I'm a quiet fan of. I sit on uh, an art board at the moment, I sit on two boards. Uh, so, yeah, so theatre, walking, going out, sport more for watching these days as opposed to taking part, mm. uh, and reading. So that's probably what occupies my time in terms of relaxing. Oh, and then before you know it, you look at your week and you go, well, we're recording on a, on a Thursday night here, and you go, oh, my word, it's Friday already. And, and, and that feeling in terms of where does your week go, I, I presume you have that every week and have done for a number of years. Yeah, I do. But for, for me, and this is one of the things that I've got to work on, is that work is great, it's, uh, but I think it's probably too much. So uh, I tend to work about seven days a week at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that I'm trying to factor in, trying to work less. So for, effectively, Friday becomes a bit of a blur. Mm. Because on Saturday, I'm either working or broadcasting or doing something similar. Mm. I, I completely agree in terms of it, where it, it can just sort of morph into one. But uh, the, the, the two key assets we all have, and they are time, and your health in terms of absolutely and, yeah and you've got to get that balance where with my running i just say i pencil it in and that is when it happens and it you know, even if I, i'm sorry if the queen is watching obviously we could incorporate a run and if the queen needed to have a chat to me but friday morning first thing got to go for the run that's it so if you manage your majesty if you're listening make sure you contact james at lunchtime I don't know why I thought that, but obviously professional James, professional, you know, in the future, who knows, my acting career could take off, um, could be presenting the ITV news, Sky News, who, who knows in terms of it, but uh, we, we, we've talked all casually now in terms of stuff, which again, again, this is where I've got to be professional, we're going to have to go back to your insights as well on here, because okay. there's so much stuff in terms of it where we, we, we've mentioned ACCA, but what sort of other roles have you had in the past, or would you encourage ACCA members out there to get involved with in their local area? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so I've been fortunate, I've sat on the ACCA district panel for seven years, uh, yeah. And one thing I've learned is, one of the many things I've learned is that ACCA panel is great. It's a great networking thing. Um, you mentioned LinkedIn earlier on as mm -hmm. a virtual network, but you know, the ACCA networks, and there are loads of them all over the world, is a great way to interact and with the members, mm -hmm. great way to form connections, a great way to form sort of bonds, 
of friendship and potential business opportunities as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, I sat on the ACCA board, did that for seven years, thoroughly enjoyed it. There's the social as well as the business end of things. And there's a great learning experience there. Um, I've also sat on as trustee boards for about the last 40 years. I sit on two at the moment. So I sit on, uh, I can give it a plug if you don't mind. Oh, uh, plug away. <laughs> so I sit on a, as a non-executive director on Great Central Railway PLC and also on the Spark for Arch Children's Festival in Leicester. Mm -hmm. um, I've sat on a variety of other boards here. Um, what else have I done? So that's in terms of what I do these days. And I've mm. been fortunate because of all these connections, all these things looking for experience. You know, I've worked in countries like Cuba, in Russia, in, in East Africa. Mm. Oh, mega. And uh, for anyone who's thinking about working overseas, I mean, what, what was it like going from Cuba, East Africa? H how did you adapt to that as well? Or is it a case of, I'm just going to go for this? Yeah, I think so. I think you've got to have that. I think sometimes for those people who may not have stepped you know, too much outside their own local geographical area, it can be quite scary. We have this idea that somehow people are completely different. It's very cliche, James, and I apologise for that cliche, but fundamentally, people are fundamentally the same wherever you go in the world. That's what I found. So if you go there with a good heart, if you go there with openness, and you're prepared to smile, and you're prepared to try and communicate with somebody, mm. it's amazing how far that can take you. So... I think you're going to have some respect for the cultures that you go into. Mm. You've got respect for the way they conduct their lives. It may not be the way that you want to conduct yours, but it's their country, it's their rules, it's their regulations. Mm. So if you go with respect, in like you treat with any individual, then I think it's a fantastic experience. It broadens the mind. You learn so much. Yeah. It's quite easy. It's, the UK are particularly bad sometimes of thinking that actually what goes on outside their immediate territory, mm. you know, it's the same. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think there's a great amount of learning experience that can be embraced. Well, we're talking now about comfort zones, which you've, you've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable as well. So in my sort of uh, routine for people who are new watching in as well, every morning it's a case of you have a warm shower and then right at the end, last 30 <laughs> seconds, Oh, Arctic. And uh, <laughs> you, you, your mind and your body get used to it because it just poof, wakes you up, but it just makes you uncomfortable. And the psychology behind it is a case of if you put this cold shower on for 30 seconds, surely nothing else is going to be worse than this for the day. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's good. Good attitude. Yeah, well, it's, it's just trying new things. I mean, I, I get comments and feel free if anyone's watching this now, put in the comments anything you would recommend to try. So audio books as well, and cold showers and changing your mindset as well, listening to the speakers. It, it makes such a difference that um, 84,600, uh, I think's the number top of my head, I should know that uh, before making the point, is, is the amount of seconds in a day. And uh, one, of, one of the uh, chaps I go to a networking event said, look, if someone says something bad to you in 10 seconds that you get a bit annoyed at, why would you let 10 seconds out of all those seconds ruin your day? And you put it in perspective, you go, he's so right in terms of, you hear from people who, oh, you know, I've had a bad day, X, Y, and Z. And you just go, it's all right. It's okay. It's out of your control. Next thing. Positive, off we go. Because the last thing you want is taking something negative home, ruins your evening, and it can keep knocking you on as well when the next comment comes along. You're quite right. Have you ever heard that expression, James, that you can't change what happens in the world, but you can certainly change your reaction and attitude towards them? Mm. Just simple question as to, can I control this? And if the answer is no, okay. Oh, well, I can't really get worried about that because there's <laughs> nothing in my control. And it's amazing. This, once you start putting that into perspective, well, can I control what dinner I have tonight? Well, yes. So if it tastes bad, then I'm afraid that's your fault, James. <laughs> but uh, if it's something on the news that I disagree with, well, I can't really control what they're saying. Sorry, Fiona Bruce, if you're watching now as well. There's lots of apologies going out today. But um, yeah, just little things like that, little changes in mindset, which we never really get taught about it too much or how to think, but is that something you maybe consider putting into practice in your firm about getting people to read wider or new ideas? Yeah, I mean, what we always try and encourage, we have a, like a monthly catch up. So on a Monday morning, we have our staff conversation, staff meeting, review what's happened in the last week, talk about new clients, talk about new opportunities, talk about what's going on. And then we break off into what we call like more technical, more detailed conversations. And what we always try and reinforce is, is the things that customers value mm. is the interaction that we have with them. And I, there's a wonderful 
way that I love people to live, and that's empathy. So it's not saying you have to agree with somebody, but try and put yourself in their shoes. Mm. Empathize with that customer that might be having a busy day. You might send them an email. It doesn't mean they've got a chance to read it. It doesn't mean mm. they've had a chance to look at it. So if they're not responding, you know, pick up the phone, talk to them, you know, mm. have a conversation, have a dialogue with them. And I have to say, I've got a great team. Um, it's taken me, you know, quite a number of years to get the right team, by the way. Mm. So, I've, you know, as they say, like, you've got to kiss a number of frogs before you meet your prince. You have to have another int- number of interesting members of staff before you find the right team. So, yeah, empathy, encouraging to be brighter. Um, I still support my team. So, in other words, when we do reviews, um, I don't do a lot of the what I call, you know, data processing these days because it's mm. not a good use of my time. But I'll review their work, tell them what's going on. And believe it or not, by the way, I, I even t- still test them on their double entry just so if they come to understand something, they've got that practical and the theoretical framework knitting oh. together. Oh, spot on. The, the, the underlining aspects of it, if, if a client says to you on the phone, oh, if I do this, what mm-hmm. will it mean? Well, it's going to impact there and there. Little things like that that you just have to know spot on and it can add just value. But I really like how you mentioned empathy there as well when as a previous tutor yourself, you have no idea what, uh, what the student's been through that day when they come into your classroom or anything on those lines. So if they're feeling a bit down or if anything's not particularly right, you have no idea in terms of you can't make a judgment that obviously it's your fault or anything on those lines. So understanding, just being a nice person, communication comes into it. All so underrated skills for me personally. I think you're right there. Now, those soft skills, as some people might call them, mm. um, you know, implies you know, as it is, it's so it's not just, am I technically brilliant? Do I know my advanced tax FM inside out? Well, that's great. Yeah. But, you know, it's the other aspects you need to bring to the fore as well. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely something which I wish in uh, with the exam studies that you, you do sort of inheritance tax and all these sort of areas. But OK, picture yourself that you're in a situation where you've got to do an inheritance tax calculation with a client, with a family, who unfortunately something's happened, how you communicate this information, how you liaise in, in getting that information is a whole different kettle of fish versus here's the information in the exam. So it's definitely something anyone watching, communication, uh, I think social media and personal brand as well. That's, I mean, you're a massive fan of LinkedIn. How, how's that sort of helped you? And LinkedIn's helped me work uh, very well. So it's a great network for talking to people. Don't immediately see it as a cash machine or I, if I do a mm. couple of things on here. I've always found that and there's two things I take away from what you just said there, James. One is about comfort zone. So I do a weekly, uh, a weekly podcast. I do a weekly video. I do broadcast. Um, it's not my most natural condition, by the way, to do that mm. stuff, but you've got to do it. And I think you've got to behave in the online space as you would do face-to-face there as well. Mm. So LinkedIn is great for me. I do other platforms as well, but I love it because it's great to hear what other people are saying. It's great mm-hmm. to share information, share content, but you've got to look at it as a long game, just as much as you know, a networking event. You can't just go up to a stranger, put your business card in their face and expect them to connect with you straight away. So take your time, build up a rapport, build up a relationship. Um, and that's how I would approach LinkedIn and any other social media platform. Well, yeah, th- th- this is the other point of uh, the podcast itself. So viewers actually get to know you and I a bit better. But then from our perspective, before we came, before we came live to sound even more <laughs> professional right now, well, I-, I know you put out content online, on YouTube, all these different things. And I picked up on some, some tricks and stuff, which we went through beforehand. And that's going to really help you. You know, it's a case of you're helping out one another in terms of these sort of things that little changes like that could lead to just those little differences that could lead to that next client or two and just a bigger outreach. So, yeah, it's all yeah, about sharing information. It is. And that's an interesting. Like somebody once taught me this thing that says when it comes to the world of social media, A, B, social, there's a clue in the title. Mm. But it's about share, 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 mm. and then maybe ask. Yes, I like that in terms of a good ratio. Um, I also got taught in terms of social media on a, uh, it was a sort of course for 45 minutes, a free one yeah. to go to. But the main thing I wrote down, it's always stayed with me, is whatever you put on social media, whether that's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it may be, if that was placed on the front page of the Daily Mail, the Daily Express, Telegraph, FT, would you be happy with that? 
Oh, that's a good test. Big test. I, I think that's it really resonated with me where I've, I've come to write posts on LinkedIn that it may be a bit controversial and stuff on those sides. And it's really just brought me back and say, no, you, you can't write that because it may upset X, Y, or Z people. Or you see people who have posted photos online of, of whatever they've got up to. Mm. And it's a case of, oh my word, no, I wouldn't do that. And then it's just changing that mindset again. Sorry, this is another thing as well. What I liked about um, some of the stuff I've read of yours, James, is again, if you, you talk about those things that you learn the hard way. And again, if whatever you're doing in social media, whatever you do in life, you've got to be authentic. You've got to be you. Mm -hmm. So it's this idea of you present an image on social media that you think is either going to be very polished mm -hmm. or very whatever. Well, when somebody meets you in real life and they say, hang on, that's what I've met in social media and this is what you're like in real life. What's going on? There's a confusion. So it's difficult to be yourself mm. when you're doing social media and you're doing broadcast for the first time, but mm. that's what you're going to do. It's the thing that's easiest to remember mm. and it's the thing that you're best at. You know you better than anybody else does, but be authentic. Would your mum actually approve of what you've just said? Maybe that's not always a good litmus test, by the way, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, but coming on to a sort of more general question in terms yeah. of it, but um, with, with your funky headphones on now as well, are we, are we still there? Are we all we're right? Still, we're still being funky with the headphones. <laughs> um, in terms of your sort of career then, what were, or even put sort of maybe personal life, what, what's been your biggest lesson that you've learned for the viewers out there that they could take this, get it jotted down, put it in their journal? What would you, what would you go for? I think the biggest lesson is probably the more, the more boring one is that two things. One, have a, have a Northern star, have an, have a goal, have an objective that you can say in 12 months, two years, three years time. Yep. Yeah, I've managed to achieve this. So for those ACCA students, you know what goals are. They've got to be smart. And number two, then figure out a route map and a plan how to get there and put the effort in, you know, application. And if you can do that for me, that's a great start point. Absolutely spot on. Along, along with the, the hard work on there as well, it's a case of having that goal so you know where to hit it and sort of think of it like your sat nav or something on those lines. So it's not just going to be a direct route to get there. Even if you go a bit off track, left, still right, or whatever, like <laughs> um, you're still going to get there, but it's not going to be, everyone's path is going to be different at the end of the day. So 100%, 100%. Mega stuff. I mean, my, my personal one is a case of just at the end of every day, just if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I have put myself out there and I've done my absolute most, spot on. I can sleep. That's it. Can I, can I share a little, a very similar story to that, James? The floor is uh, yours. This is going back quite a number of years. And I remember, and it, it might sound macabre to some people, but I think it's a great salutary lesson here. It's the idea that if you fast forward in your life, and you sat in on your own funeral and you actually heard what people are genuinely saying about you, what would your thought process be? You know, and if people were actually honest and said, look, this guy's a great guy or not so good, that to me is the ultimate judgment about how you conduct yourself in this life. <sighs> we'll just let that settle in. Now, now I know that is something which I'm quite confident to talk about in terms of that is proper stuff and it gets into your mind that will, that could, that will change. It's Friday morning tomorrow. That alarm will go off, but I'll already be awake. That's the key thing in terms of it, that just, it's just every day, a little bit more, a little bit more. But I, I completely agree with you, Mamu, there as well. That's uh, mega advice. I mean, who, who told you that? Or where, where, why did that come to mind? It, it actually, it, I, I remember what it was, I can't remember what the program was, but it was actually a news item or a documentary. I can't even remember who the individuals were, but what struck me is about the wonderful eulogy that people talk about this person's life. And I was thinking, do you know what, wouldn't that be a great thing? You know, what would people say about you? Mm. Uh, and how would they, what would they honestly, if you were, if you were that fly on the wall, what would they actually say about you genuinely? You know, mm. having, if you had some degree of self-awareness, looked at yourself, your conduct, what would that be? And how would that make you feel? And I think for me, it was watching that documentary about somebody else's tribute and just turning that on myself uh, because I've always been self-conscious and self-aware or try to be anyhow. Um, and I think that internal reflection where you want to try and do better, be a decent human being. And don't get me wrong, by the way, in all of this, you've got, you're in business to make money. That's not your driver. That's not your primary goal but actually making money along the way has got to be one of your key objectives here. How you do that, the values that you have, mm. you know, how you share that money, that's 
part of the conversation, that's part of the bargain. And for me, ultimately, because I like helping, uh, I like being in the world of business through cross different spectrums. Mm. I like making money. I like being in charge. I like trying things. I'm a bit of a risk taker, a cautious pessimist, if you want to call it. <laughs> um, so it's always those little things, but I want to be a better person as well. Oh, mega stuff. I mean, who knows? Some of your staff may be watching this as well. It's like, <laughs> All these lovely things, removed. Gosh, lovely stuff. <laughs> I probably don't recognise anything. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, oh my worst. Gosh, how motivating. Why don't we get this on a Monday morning? <laughs> In fact, that could be it. You just play this on Monday morning. I'm going to take guys. a recording and a transcript and play it on a loudspeakers on Monday now. Exactly. Guys, we are all sorted. I mean, we, we are ready to go for the week after watching this <laughs> for an hour. Gosh, Matt, uh, I know where is the time going, but I've, I've got to ask you, I ask every person on the podcast, is there any sort of final words of wisdom that you wouldn't be able to sleep tonight if you didn't get off your chest? Just anything that comes to mind that the viewers out there could get some real value from. Okay, I would say two or three things. If you are thinking about developing your own practice, well, in fact, there's two things. First of all, the world of accountancy, I have to say there are two things that I've achieved in my life as qualifications or whatever that I'm the most proud of. Number one is my ACCA qualification because it's open doors, it's done, given me great opportunities. Um, and even if you don't stay in the world of accountancy, it's a fantastic amount of opportunities that are open for you globally, national, or so. That's number one. The second thing is my driving license. Uh, and when I actually got my job in industry, um, I didn't actually have a driving license at the time. I was in my late twenties. And when they found out I didn't have a driving license, I had a six month window to pass my test. Otherwise I wouldn't have kept the job. Right. So with that in mind, for me, I would say if you want to go into the world of starting your own practice or a business, you've got to treat it as a business. Uh, don't think of yourself, or oh, I'm an accountant. Mm -hmm. Now let me try and apply that trade. That's just what you're selling in to solve people's problems and pains. Mm. Work at it, apply, don't chase the money in the early stages. And if you've got a vision and you've got a plan and you apply yourself, you've got a great likelihood of actually achieving something. Oh, mega stuff. Find that purpose and then just, just keep shooting for it because the, Absolutely. Money, the, money, the money will come from it. But quite a lot of people are money driven. But if you just have that purpose and as you have, the customer is at heart, they are the people who we turn up to the office for every day to do our best for, then you'll be fine. That's all it is in terms of it. But I must say, I've really enjoyed it. You and I could, I, we're going to have to do an episode two or something. This has been <laughs> really enjoyable. But uh, now for anyone who is new watching the podcast as well, for every lovely guest who has some affiliation with ACCA who comes on, they are, award, well, not awarded. We don't do awards on this podcast. <laughs> we do. Oh, we do superb. we do acorns on here so this is your acorn that is going to be planted in my garden she's a Perfect. she's a, she's a beauty look at that she's going in my uh, in the pot this weekend my moon in terms of it so uh, i plant a tree for every lovely guest that is every guest obviously <laughs> in terms of the tree <laughs> should i say and uh, yes she'll be planted there do, do you want to name her or anything like that? well that's a great thing now is it too egoistical to call it the mood well, <laughs> I can put it in I'll tell you what, now, what I'll do, I'll name it after my wife. Uh, I'll oh. call it Serena. Oh, wow. Serena, if you are watching, there will be a lovely tree growing for you in Leicester as well. I mean, who knows? I might even pop it round to your office. You can have it. Mate, listen, you're welcome anytime, James. Oh, oh, absolute pleasure. And I'll bring you some curry and uh, we'll, we'll have to do a track day as well because I'll have to see how this license has been put into play. <laughs> Wow. Well, I must say as well, for the viewers who are here, still here with us, I'll put all of our details in the description to this video. So feel free to connect with Mahmood or myself on LinkedIn. And I'll put his business details down there as well. Go check it out. There's loads of amazing content, loads of real tips. And as you know, from watching this really down to earth guy who you can get in touch with, have a good chat about any questions you've got as well. Well, as always, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to my mood for coming and joining me this evening as well. And for the lovely hot chocolate, which I've got so much energy going into the <laughs> evening now, I must say. Um, but keep in touch on the description below. Feel free to subscribe so you get to see all of the other episodes. But as always on that bombshell, we will see you next time. Cheers. Thank you very Cheers. much. Bye. Thanks.